What's up guys, wanna make a video on why I think that cryptocurrencies are definitely something that you need in your portfolio and some of the advantages of that compared to property, compared to stocks and options, compared to gold and silver. And why it's so, so strong. And there's a lot of people that are on the fence about crypto and they maybe don't understand it and they don't understand the power of it at this point. Now, um, there's certain obvious things that you know are an advantage of it you know it's not under government control to where they're dictating the supply and just printing 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 something like that it's obviously a set distribution and a set inflation rate um that is diminishing over time and and, and that's something i'm not going to necessarily go over but uh there's a finite supply and with bitcoin it's 21 million so with Litecoin, it's 84 million. Um, with Monero, it's like 18.4 million. So there's a finite supply, so you have the scarcity component, and I'm not gonna focus on that. We know that. Now, um, one of the things that I saw a video of Grant Cardone once talking about real estate, and he said, the problem with Bitcoin and Ethereum and cryptocurrencies is you can't leverage against them, but with real estate, you can. That's incorrect. He's ill-informed. He doesn't understand that with decentralized finance that you can lever against your cryptos and the power of that is just there's so 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 many possibilities with it let's say we're kind of in the bear market but we're getting some movement bitcoin today has popped over twenty nine thousand dollars and we're getting some movement and let's just say you're like okay i think that the bottom is already in and say you feel that way and it it's probably likely that, you know, with these black swan events of these banks collapsing, people need to gravitate to something of relative security. They're not really sure where to go. They don't feel comfortable with their money in the bank, which they would be right to not feel comfortable. So people are running to cryptos, partially. Now, I think we're going to have some pullbacks. And I'm not saying, oh, dump everything in and, and we're blue skies after this. That's not necessarily the case. We're going to have some pullbacks. We've talked about the Ethereum inflation bomb also on this channel. Um, so now that being said, you can lever against these cryptos. You can borrow against your Bitcoin and buy a property, buy a house, buy a car, and still retain ownership of your Bitcoin and your Ethereum. And um, so you've got that pillar that you're able to lever against with decentralized finance. Now, I'm not gonna go into the specifics of how to do that. If you want more consulting and you're unsure, maybe you even know the first steps that let's say on the Binance Smart Chain, uh, one money market is Venus. And I've used it extensively over the last couple years. And you can lever against all kinds of assets. You can lever against your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your BNB, your Dogecoin, Polkadot, all, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of assets on there that you can leverage against. Now, it's not as seamless as it may sound. You can't just take native Bitcoin or native Litecoin and just send it over to that address. It's just gonna get lost. It's tokenized. You have to bridge it in. There's certain things that you have to do to bridge it onto the Binance Smart Chain. Also, all these other chains, you have the same ability. There's always money markets on all these um, you know, decentralized finance platforms, essentially. So Phantom, Avalanche, Solana, all that stuff, like they all have their money markets and you can lever against these different assets. And then you can take the assets and you can bridge it off onto another chain um, and do various different things with that. So very, you know, fairly advanced strategies and stuff that I'll use to um, basically lever against assets and then take that borrowed amount off of there and take it over and get it over onto a completely different blockchain like Hive, for instance, and do different things there. Earn a return off of it um, to stack more Bitcoin or stack more, you know, outrun inflation potentially um, by just stacking more US dollars, printing money essentially. Uh, there's a lot of different strategies you can use. And um, you wanna balance your risk so that you're not running hot, so that if there is a pullback or anything like that, that you don't get liquidated. So there's a lot of things that you have to watch out for. And again, like I said, 
if you're wanting consulting on that and stuff like that, we can talk about that um, individually and figure out what's what the best situation for you is. Now, um, as far as property investment right now, it's it's we've talked about this a little bit where you know most most of these markets in the U.S. are you know pretty fluffy right now, pretty bubbly. Um, now, obviously, the epicenter of the fall apart scenario is in San Francisco, you know, insane amounts of crime um, and property values are down to 2017 levels essentially at this point. Um, and who would want to live there? Who could have a business there? You really can't really, you know, start up a business and do anything there. So um, now at some point the price will get low enough and people will take a chance and they'll, they'll pour back into that opportunity. Now that being said, Across the United States in various locations people don't know where to put their money if they're looking to gravitate into a different property or something like that um, and so that becomes an issue if you try to go after let's say exotic cars um, the car market maybe you feel it's it's bubbled up and you feel like that that's gonna fall apart so maybe you don't want to put your money there um, stocks and options you don't really have full control or real ownership of that you might feel like eh, the, the you know the economy doesn't look good so going into that is kind of tough now you do have the power of leverage from the point that um, you can 3x or 5x or you can you can apply this like additional leverage within that but you can't like apply leverage or borrow against that per se and then take money out a lot of times it's a little bit harder to do you can't operate in margin and do different things like that so you do do you have um, you know various various different things you could do or you can ex increase your exposure if you feel like there is going to be a big move by um, buying options but at that point you have a wasting asset so um, that's kind of tough now over the history of Bitcoin the chart is up and to the right so I don't recommend personally betting against Bitcoin some people do these short-term you know, they'll do short plays or, or they'll bet against it. So I don't recommend that. It's over the long term, it's up and to the right. So um, I feel like that's a risky short term play. Someone's going to do it. I don't recommend that. That being said, we're at this lower point, And if you mitigate your leverage amounts um, and you're not you're not running too hot, then um, and you mitigate your risk that way, then you can borrow against that and you can do something else with the money. When your money's doing something and it's not just kind of like this piggy bank that you can't crack, it's something you can lever against and use that money for something else. Gold and silver, if you own it on the US markets and it's like in some kind of brokerage account, um, I mean, again, you don't, you don't have physical possession of it. If you take physical possession of gold and silver, there's a lot more friction getting in and out. To buy gold coins silver coins all that kind of stuff getting in and out there's a lot of friction and when there's a lot of friction you got to be holding for the longer term but gold and silver has not really performed that well even in these hyperinflationary events or i mean i don't know if we can call it hyperinflationary i mean it's kind of it's kind of flirting with that but let's just say we were running at 20 25 percent 30 percent in some cases for inflation but let's just say 20 percent 20 percent inflation in the united states because obviously we can't go by their data. Um, even at that, I mean, gold keeps flirting with this kind of $2,000 price point. Um, again, manipulated market, how much paper silver, how much paper gold is there out there? And secondly, how much actual gold and silver is in the world? We don't actually know. Why is it anytime I'm watching business news, constantly seeing these commercials? Oh yeah, you know, you can get these. You can get these one ounce of gold, one ounce of silver and stuff. It's minted in Liberia or whatever. Um, and it's just like there's this infinite supply. Oh, they're, they're minting this up and they're selling this. And it's co this commemorative um, collection. And they're always, it's like, how much of it there is there? You know, like they just keep pumping this out, pumping this out of the mines. Um, and I don't know if you guys have seen the one video from Africa where they, they just were just digging this stuff up in the whole village, which is digging all this gold up just by the handful um, so who knows you know the whole mountain was full of gold 
Um, so that's part of the reason why I don't like it. Uh, Bitcoin, and I'm not saying don't have it. I'm not saying don't have it. I just don't like that play. You really, it's gonna be hard to lever against it. I'm sure there are some services where you could have it custodied physically with somebody and they would maybe give you a loan against gold or silver. I, I just think there's gonna be a lot of friction with that. It's gonna be tough. Um, but it, it, you know, I don't think that it's impossible. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure there are some services like that. But you wanna have physical possession. You wanna have control and immediate control over this stuff. And with crypto and with decentralized finance, you do have that. You have possession of it. You have possession of the keys and you can lever against it. And you're not using these necessarily these third party exchanges um, to do that. Now there are those services out there, uh, but that's more counterparty risk to do it like that. Um, that being said, you do still have risk. I don't, I don't want to take the risk element out of it. With any investment, you do have a certain amount of risk and you know, a certain amount of diversification that you could do um, oftentimes so that you just, you know, don't just completely end out on the streets. So that being said, guys, um, you know, with Bitcoin and Ethereum and cryptocurrencies, you do have the power of leverage. And that's why I feel like it's it's superior to gold and silver. And there's all these different markets that balance themselves. So if there is some sort of imbalance, they're typically going to be an arbitrage play that they can balance themselves and something else you could participate in. And just the speed at which this moves just makes more much more sense um, than gold and silver to me. And the fact that the market is open 24-7, 365, you don't have to wait to sell or be in some after hour scenario or oh the market's closed that kind of stuff no the market is always open and it's not just one market it's thousands of markets all over the world to buy and sell this stuff and um there is a certain amount of friction but i, I feel like it's less than gold and silver then with properties it's relatively illiquid you have an illiquid investment, I think is a good investment, especially if you can do something with the land um, to earn something off of or grow something or produce something or self-sustainable, but it's illiquid. You take a while to sell and there's quite a bit of friction. There's all these gatekeepers, title companies, agents, brokerages, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so there's, there's a certain amount of friction in that in that market. Um, but you do have the power of leverage. You can leverage against it. And then you can get these loans that are drawn out for obviously 30 plus years potentially um, that you could have on it, which could allow you to be income producing. And um, if you pick and choose your battles right, you know, it, 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 could be, it could be a good investment in the long term kind of thing. But like I said, with cryptocurrencies, well, let's just say you had a bunch of Bitcoins and Litecoins and Ethereum, and you're like, I wanna have that as a core pillar of my investment strategy. And let's say you levered against it and you bought property, you bought a car, bought a dirt bike, you know, and maybe some extra cash or something like that. You levered against it. And you bought that stuff outright. And then it was like, okay, I took a loan against my my crypto and let's say your crypto goes up you still have the properties but let's just say everything tanks you get hacked um you know the the money market that you borrowed that you put those assets on let's say it all went away you still had the property still had the car still had the dirt bike you owned it outright um and you still had that stuff so and let's just say none of that happens because that's that's low probability somewhat if you're if you're if you're doing certain things, um, and, you know, taking certain precautions. So um, let's say you don't get hacked. And then it's like, well, okay, then you had that core pillar and the values went up and then you were able to extract more money out of it. See, that's the thing. Like people say like, you're gonna get to a point where you're never gonna have to sell your Bitcoins. And that's kind of true at this point. If someone came in with enough energy and they had a big enough position that you would never have to sell it. Have you ever heard people, and it could be farmers, it could be different people that bought real estate, and their whole strategy is to never sell. They don't ever sell their properties, they just keep accumulating over time. Because over time, their their prediction is that, well, 
the money's inflating, it's somewhat of a hedge against inflation. And if you just stay ahead of it and keep accumulating more properties, you're gonna end up with more worth and you know you can lever against it if you need money, um, but to never sell the properties. And, and you're kind of to that point now with where crypto is, that if you have a big enough position and you've got enough energy in there, uh, that you end up in a situation where you never have to completely sell out of or you never have to sell out of that core pillar anyway guys that's a lot of information if you want more information um, ask in the comment section below and if you want individual help on utilizing so many strategies and stuff like that we can talk about that we can talk about some of the stuff that i've done some more of these advanced strategies so anyway guys follow me on all social media at brian phobos youtube instagram steam it twitter hive dtube everywhere